So hello fellow coin collectors and this is Glenn and in today's video we're going to review the 1989 uncirculated mint set. So as you can see basically it says there and first thing I do know uh, when I see this set is that I do like the cover. So it has a sunset or sunrise and it has two kangaroos uh, silhouettes and you have the sun in the background. So this is more likely taken in the desert region uh, because it's so red. Uh, a lot of the soils in the desert region are like orangey reddish colour. So that indicates a uh, not that much vegetation. If you look on the back of the set you can see it looks like it has a dust storm. Might be in the background. So it has some information, so the Royal Australian Mint Set, Suburbs of Deakin, opened in 1965. Okay. Your set is made up of coins which have not been circulated, so all the coins are fresh from the mint. Although produced by normal production methods, it has been specially examined to ensure defects are an, at an absolute minimum. So these ones... A lot of people say they dump their coins into barrels, so these ones wouldn't uh, uh, probably not have been dumped into the actual barrels. They would have been uh, separated from that process, I would say, along the way to make sure that the coins are not damaged. If you look on the inside cover, you can see the same thing. On the back, it has the specifications of the coins. So the one sent two cent to two dollar coins and it has the diameter the mass the denomination up the top it has the uh, uh the actual metal that's in the coins but it doesn't give the element so copper it would be 75 percent nickel 25 percent uh, aluminium 92 percent i think there's copper and tin eight percent copper and probably uh, I think it's like half a percent tin, so there's half a percent missing somewhere. And bronze, that's probably copper. Oh, copper tin and zinc, probably. Oh, I, I forget what metal is actually in the one and two cent coin. If we open it up, you can see it has the animals that are on our coinage. So we have the short big echidna. And feather tail glider, so feather tail glider curls up on a one cent coin for a lizard on a two cent coin. And it says spiny anteater instead of the echidna on the five cent, ten cent, twenty cent display Australian lawyer birds and platypus. So it's funny how they've got spiny anteater instead of echidna. Uh, maybe back in the 80s, that's what it's more likely to have been called. Uh, okay, on the 50 cent, we have an emu and a jump uh, kangaroo. $1 a jumping kangaroo. And the $2 depicts a portrait in Australian earliest human inhabitants, the Aborigine. Uh, one pound Jimmy. Okay, so these are works of three designers. So the $2 is horse Hane. Uh, most of the other coins are stu Stuart. Devlin and on the obverse is Raphael Macaluf, a portrait of Queen Elizabeth II. So here we have the free full neck lizard. Uh, this doesn't live in my region, you have to go up to the northern regions. Uh, the platypus lives around my area, I'm not too sure. Plenty Creek, Plenty River, should I say, has the platypus. Uh, uh, I see this quite about at least once or twice a year around my area. And feather tail glider, nah. We have the what, ring tail possum and the brush tail. So here are the actual coins that are in the set. So all the denominations that we issue for circulation. So the coins that are only issued in sets and not for circulation were the 50 cent, the 20 cent, and the one dollar. So all the other coins that are one and two cent we issued for circulation in 1989. Five and ten cent were, and so was the two dollars. Two dollars has 
HH on it. And that coin is a pretty common uh, coin to get in circulation. So here I've zoomed in. So here's a feather tail glider, frilled neck lizard. And you can see it has some uh, problems with uh, and the. So down here it looks like it has some uh, staining. Then we had the five cent with the the echidna. The 10 cent with the lyrebird. I saw those at King Lake on the weekend. Beautiful birds. We had the platypus on the 20 cent coin. So all the focus is off. I hated that. And the 50 cent has the coat of arms of Australia. Of the States. Uh, One dollar has the kangaroos. And the two dollar has the indigenous Australian. If we look on the obverse, so these all have the portrait that was current at the time of Queen Elizabeth II. So if you find any of these in circulation, uh, if you find the 20 50 and $1 in circulation, then you know the, those coins come out of this set or a proof set or maybe another type of a uh, commemorative set uh, the one and two cent you, know, you shouldn't be able to get these in circulation anymore you might be able to ask at the bank uh, but they probably should return them to the uh, Royal Australian Mint for recycling but yeah it's not a nice set uh, yeah it is a nice set but you know it's not really that that scarce 150,000 of these were made that's down from 1988, in which there were 240,000, so it's a reduction of 90,000. And ever since that time period, these have been decreasing in their production numbers. And currently, they produce between 35,000 and 50,000 per year. So that is a big reduction. I purchased this one for $30 plus postage, so probably about $40. But most of the sets are selling on eBay are between $40 and $50. So the issue price for this was $14. So we need to see if these are a good investment. So here I've uh, looked up 1989 mint set. And as you can see, a lot of these are just single coins that they've taken out of the actual set. And the first one is just the cover. It says so with no coins. And if we go down, you can see they sell them for all different prices. So the first one we come along is a bid for a mint set, $6.50 as four days ago. So if you wanted to purchase one of these, you put in your price. So I would say $30. And if you win, you win. If you don't, uh, there's always other sets to... Uh, come across so we've still got individual coins two dollars one dollar one dollar so we're still in the sets and if we go down one and two cent pieces so now they're getting a bit more expensive uh, okay five cent uh, if you want to put a default just put like $30, it will exclude all the ones that are just single coins. So the last we've got is $40, and that is free postage. Then we've got $42, $35, uh, so that's, that's $42 anyway, with postage. So you're talking about $40 per set. $37. So these ones, if you purchase it at $40, yeah, you're not really going to be able to make any profit of it uh, to resell. So that's when, if you purchased it in 1989. We'll see if that is uh, worth uh, an investment. So what I'm talking about investment is if you can make a profit, but you need to take into account inflation. So we need to see what the inflation is has been since 1989. 
So that's where the inflation calculator comes into it. So just type in inflation calculator, you come to the RBA website, Reserve Bank of Australia, and you'll come to this. There is also one for pre-decimal coins, which is this link down here. But $14 in 1989, in 2020, is worth $30.37. And it does make an importance if you change your date. So if you change this one to 1988, so 37 cents, calculate. You see you got a $2.60 difference. So we had 30, 37, now we've got 32, 65. So inflation was quite a lot higher between 88 and 89 than it is now. So basically, if you wanted to sell it for forty dollars, you're going to make it like a ten dollars profit for the set. That ten dollars profit is over the thirty-three year period. So if you want to take, ooh, okay, let's see if this works. So we take ten dollars. And we'll see if we can do the reverse. 20, maybe it won't allow us. In 1989. Oh no, you can't do the reverse. Oh, that's a, that is a pity. Uh, but I would say it probably would have been worth uh, at least half. So $5 you would have made on top of the $14 you purchased. So that's $19 in 1989 values. So uh, that that's okay for me. That's how I work it out. Anyway, that is the 1989 uncirculated coin set. Uh, you can basically get the proof set for nearly the same price, so $40 or $50. Uh, the proof set is a lot better if you like higher quality coins, uh, the mintage, oh, the proof set, what's the proof set mintage? Need to go to the Renix catalog, that is 65,000, so basically half, just under half, but the price is pretty much similar, so if you wanted to get these, I'd recommend you get the proof set for pretty much the same price and we'll have a look now and see what the proof set is but these coins were not a good investment so the issue price for a proof set was $60 and as you can see you can purchase this one for $55 so there is a decrease of $5 over the 33 year period you got other one so you got this one 35 so if this does sell for 35 one bid for two days. Uh, so that's not really going to be a high uh, bid set. Sorry, I should have moved that over. Talking about this one here. 35, one bid, two and a half days. I don't think that's going to go for too much over that value. So we see that the proof sets don't go for anything over the issue price. So this one you would have lost at least $25 uh, value. So these are a pretty bad investment. You only get these if you're into proof sets or you just like proof coins. Uh, you don't get them for an investment. These are definitely a bad investment to get. In the future, these are most likely not going to go up in value because look, there's just so many of them uh, on, the, on the site. Uh, so... Even that uncirculated set, this one's not going to go up in value anymore. I believe it's reached a maximum value, some of the proof sets. So sometimes when you buy coins from the Royal Australian Mint, uh, they're just not going to be a good investment. So that's why you only buy them if you like them. And that's the same with a lot of coins. You just buy the coin if you like it. Uh, if you're into making money, then you would have to look at something else to buy. Anyway, I hope this helps you with your uncirculated and proof coin sets. 
and if you have any questions just leave a comment down below thank you and goodbye